So basically how to get to the next level. Um, really the trick, the, the trick is that you must do the things um, that the next level that you want to get to is doing, right? So you can't stay behaving at the same level you're currently at if you want to grow to that next level faster. You can do it slow in, in agony, or you can try to make, definitely you can try to make it quicker and faster, um, you know, and then a you know, referring to it as a game. If you can see it as just like, this is just a game. It's just a system. It's like playing a video game. You know, um, I just do the things to get to that next level. Um, I compartmentalize so much of this stuff. You know, I don't take it personally anymore, <laughs> ever. You know, um, it just doesn't serve me to do that. So um, there is a, a compartmentalization there in a it's, it, I don't know how to explain it. There's a disconnection from, from it being personal, but also realizing like this is a very key part of my business and I am serving people with these posts. So that is also my aim. And my goal is to serve people through the posts as best as I can. Uh, not every post is like phenomenal, you know, and that's okay. So the basic um, Instagram growth formula is F plus Q plus E equals G which is basically frequency, quality of posts, and engagement, right? Getting people to engage, which is going to in, uh, increase your growth. Okay, sometimes in the past, I have said that if you don't do any of this, at least do frequency. But the problem with that is like each one of these three qualities are equally important. So if you imagine like, oh, I'm posting every day, but my posts are not really super high quality. They're not driving more engagement, um, or meaning getting more comments on them, then that all slows your growth. So remember this, the title of this is to 10X, 10 times your Instagram growth by doing this. So you wanna do all three of these things as consistently as you possibly can. So frequency, simply how often you post, once a day is best. You know, so as we saw, even with like 5K followers, they're, you know, usually posting, you know, once a day, definitely 10K followers are posting once a day, usually. Um, now, some people have grown so big, you know, like who's the girl that teaches all the Instagram stuff? She's got like 400,000 um, followers. Some people have grown so big and then they just pick one strategic thing that is producing the majority of their results. But you really can't do what somebody at the rocket ship stage is doing if you're, you know, over here in startup, in startup stage, right? What is her name? You guys, you guys know her name. Um, and so she mostly does reels and she'll do maybe two reels a week, you know, three reels a week and still see growth. But it's because she's in, at this rocket stage, right? Like she's essentially untouchable. That's what I mean by untouchable. She can put in, thank you, Dina Brodsky. Yeah. So, you know, she'll produce a couple of really high quality reels. I mean, super high quality reels um, a week and still continue to grow. And um, it's, it's not going to work for somebody at the startup stage, right? So unfortunately, you have to do more at that startup stage to grow. Um, okay, so frequency, you know, um, once a day is best, twice a day is even better. Um, the more you post, the more you grow. That is pretty simple. However, if you're just like doing the bare minimum on the quality of the post, meaning your copy, your hashtags, things of that, trying to write copy that get people to engage, and you're just posting daily, you know, you're still not really going to see a lot of growth from that. So that's why I say all three of these, I feel like really do have equal weight. Um, so anyways, okay. Uh, growth will just naturally be slower, harder in that startup stage. Um, but, you know, oh, let's see. What was I? Da, da, da. We don't need to read all that. Frequency, okay? Once a day is the minimum I would recommend. If you really want to, you know, really, really grow and you decide you're going all in on that. Um, quality of posts. So when you post frequently as prescribed above and you're still not seeing growth, that's when you know, like if you're posting every day and you're really not seeing a lot of growth, that's when you know it's really the quality of your posts, right? So you want to start writing posts that get people to want to respond to that, that 
copy that you're writing, you wanna ask them a question, um, try questions are great because people wanna answer questions um, and we'll get into some other strategies down here. But, um, and then you'll see I'll never make a post with just an image or just a few hashtags. And I did that in the beginning and I did it repetitively for probably like a year and did not grow very much, you know, did not grow very fast until I changed that. So, um, and there's been past Instagram teachings that I've done in here in your mastermind members area that you can refer to that really get into um, all those details, like how many hashtags, how big should the audience be, all that stuff. Um, okay, so basically that's just doing the bare minimum and you'll get bare minimum results in return. You will get some results, but it'll be very little results in comparison to what you maybe want. So it's called social media for a reason. Um, the whole point is to try to get people to be social um, on your posts um, and comment on your posts. Um, also, I don't think any of you have this issue, but just double check, make sure that the, the images are decent quality. you know, not grainy, blurry, or uninteresting photos, which I have some examples down there of those. <laughs> I'll show you here in a minute. Um, of mine, my beginning post, um, using appropriate hashtags for the size of your account and uh, media, the media that you work in or your subject matter. Um, engaging. So there's a lot of ways to engage. Uh, when you're in startup stage, you want to do them all and you also, I think in startup stage, if you're focused on conversions, getting people to convert to your email list and to buy your paintings, um, the highest quality engagement that you can participate in, as I mentioned, are those DMs, like direct messaging. Um, okay, so, but you want to reply with thoughtful comments, maybe even asking somebody a question. Like if they say beautiful, you know, cause people are in a hurry, you know? <laughs> Like if they actually take the time to comment on your post, like bravo, that is freaking huge, right? Because most people are just scrolling heart, scrolling heart, scrolling heart, scrolling heart, right? So somebody comments, like that's huge. So if you're in startup stage, you know, what you might want to do is you want to might want to take that, go that extra mile, right? Reply to their comment. If they said beautiful, you know, you can always reply and ask them, oh, I'd love to know what it was that you liked about this painting the most, right? Um, so in startup stage, especially if you're focused on conversions, you wanna focus on high quality engagement. Um, and, you know, that doesn't mean like, hey, buy my painting, <laughs> you know, or hey, did you know this painting was for sale? You know, so you kind of wanna give people some time to get to know you. Um, if you're DMing back and forth um, a little bit, I would not be hesitant though, I mean, you know, I, maybe one comment back and then, hey, are you on my collector circle list? You know, like I told that girl the other day, I said, you know, I don't do commissions, um, but did you get onto my collector circle uh, list? Because that will, you know, automatically notify you when new work is available. She's like, oh, no, I didn't. That's a, okay, great, I'll do that. You know, and then I sent her the link. So it's not like you have to have 10 conversations before you um, issue a call to action uh, to somebody. And you can issue it in a, in a, like asking a question is a great way to ask, issue it. Instead of telling them what to do, you say, hey, did you happen to get on my collector circle list? You know, okay. Uh, all right, so doing lives polls, voting posts, those have always been successful for me. Basically posting multiple um, photos either on a grid or on a carousel post and asking people to vote on their favorite painting. I love to hear which one of these paintings you like the best and why. You guys don't see me doing a lot of this stuff anymore because I'm already here, <laughs> right? Like I'm already rocket ship stage. So it's it's kind of difficult to even just try to copy what I'm doing right now on Instagram because some of the stuff, some of the really strategic stuff that you need to do to get there, I don't have to do anymore, you know? So um, that's why I'm mentioning all of these here so that you're aware of them. Uh, doing, face, doing Instagram lives, if you're comfortable with that, 
um, uh, or Facebook lives really, but lives on stories, lives on Instagram stories are good. Uh, polls, voting posts, title contests, asking people to give you title ideas is a great way to get more engagement and comments on your posts. Um, doing giveaways, of course, which I know um, some of you are doing. Following back, you know, followers, um, commenting on their posts. Um, again, just engaging, right? Uh, commenting on bigger rocket ship accounts with thoughtful comments. Um, as I said, that's something that I did as well. Messaging commenters, replying back to comments, make sure that you're doing that. Um, you can also do things like setting up keyboard shortcuts on your phone to kind of, you know, again, I would say if you're in startup stage, it's probably best not to go that generic. That's what I do now, unless somebody really leaves a high quality comment. Um, okay. Strategy, these are kind of strategy steroids that you can implement here. Uh, giveaway contests to get more followers um, and likes. Like, you know, I'm sure you've seen a lot of those contests. You can find them just about anywhere. Like, like and follow my Instagram, you know, page. Um, so you can focus on that or you can focus on building your email um, list. But if your goal is to get more followers and more traction on your posts, First, this might be a better route to take because, um, you know, less people will comment on a giveaway post where you're trying to get them on your email list, right? Um, okay, like I said, voting post on favorite paintings, I already mentioned that, asking for an opinion or help post. This could be anything from something as simple as, you know, what's your favorite flower, if you're posting a flower painting, uh, your favorite color, um, but also share some, something not everything has to be freaking, you know, like a novel and, you know, like so perfectionist excellence every time. <laughs> I'm like, especially on social media, sometimes people just want like um, lighter, you know, lighter stuff. Um, and then you can build from there, right? So we're, we're not here to like, I don't know, write an opus, write our opus on our Instagram post. Um, okay. I think that's okay every now and then, you know, but um, all right, collect questions for a future Ask Me Anything Live. Um, this would be great for either collectors or, um, you know, students, um, but you can make a post saying, hey, pop, pop me a question in the comments below um, and I will answer, you know, your question on my next live, which is going to happen on such and such date, right? Or you can just, um, you can put this in your stories and you can just message them privately the answers to their questions, right? If you don't want to do a live, that's like another option, okay? So not everything has to be like a live video, but the benefit of that is like you're getting them to comment and engage with you, and then you are replying in, in turn, right? From there, you can then issue a call to action that serves you and serves them. Okay, uh, study how to improve your copywriting. Um, this is huge. I don't know how many copywriting courses I have taken. A lot, <laughs> a lot. And I'm still not that great at it. So, you know, luckily now um, some other, you know, I've got Ilya helping me more with that to improve that this year. Um, that's new. But before that, you know, it's like everything was on me to, to write. And I took a lot of different courses from Udemy to Skillshare to I think Marie Forleo's Copy Cure course, um, all of which were I learned so much from doing um, and improved, improved my writing. There's also a lot of templates that you can buy out there where people are copywriters are selling um, oh, like templates for social media for the year where they have written something like as, a, as an idea starter. And then you go, you make a copy and then you go in and you, you make what they like the gist of what they wrote fit for you. <laughs> I've used those. I love those. I love those because I was, sometimes I'd be like, I don't really have an idea of what to write about, you know? So, um, I've done those. I've purchased those and used those as a springboard, um, for that. I'm trying to think, I think one girl's name is Nikki Clark. Um, anyways, there's, there's a lot of them out there. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that I've bought and used. Um, always ask a question, you know, like when in doubt, just ask a question. Um, I would say lead with a question is a good way to do it. 
keep it simple, non-threatening. Um, you know, if if that's an integrity for you, if you're if you're going if you're going to be a hundred percent, you know, uh, polarizing, then then and that's the route you're going to go. You can do that as well. Okay, be authentic. Sometimes you might want to be controversial. You only want to do this if you're willing to alienate some of your audience that you're not interested in appealing to. Um, some of my examples and. You know, some of my examples might be um, my post about women artists in, in the art industry and um, how it's still white male dominated. You know, I specifically called that out, which a lot of, of course, white males don't like, which I understand. But it's like that's that's who I feel like I am here to serve as women artists is part of my mission, is part of my vision in this life. And so, yeah, it sucks to like get negative comments on your posts and stuff. Um, but with stuff like that, like you'll just expect it, you know, like I don't, ex I don't expect them not to get upset. You know, um, I even had recently, we sent out an email after the last launch for art life school, um, asking, you know, would you mind sharing with me why you chose not to sign up for the art life school, right? This is feedback. Like you have to get feedback from people so that you can understand where people are at, why they're buying, why they're not buying. You know, this is just reality of running a business. So, you know, for example, one man emailed back and said, well, in one of your emails, you said that you work with women artists. <laughs> and then he said, and I don't have time to do it right now. <laughs> so it's just kind of funny, yeah. And, you know, the truth is I, we do have men in there, but I would say five, maybe 5% at most. So I don't target men for that reason. You know, um, it's not that I dislike working with men. It's just that my heart is with women. Right. Um, and not every woman is going to feel that way either, but I do feel that way. So, you know, that's something that's an integrity with me for me. So being authentic, you know, when it feels right and, and safe to you and you're prepared to do that you know, definitely go for it. Um, you want to, you do want to also at times, you know, make sure that you are providing high value content that serves your audience and, and supports them and helps them and, you know, ask them what they want to hear from you, ask them what they want to know from you. If you don't have a freaking clue, <laughs> you know, um, so there's a lot of content I would like to share out in the world, but, um, not everybody likes that content. Not everybody wants to hear, hear that content. It might be something that I find interesting, but I try to make sure that the majority of my posts are is content that my customers <clears throat> and my audience will respond to, right? Like if you want engagement and you want people to share your posts, save your posts. So um, anyway, so, so I try to share things that i I take my best guess based on prior feedback from them, prior comments, you know, study those posts that have got the most comments for you. Um, like I think Barbara had a post that she said that she shared, um, you know, painting, painting the sunrise and how the, sun, the, the moment made her feel and she got all these comments back on it, right? So you wanna share a little bit more, be a little more personal about it, um, just a little more engaging about it, you know? Um, okay, so studying insights to find connecting threads on most successful posts. Um, uh, okay, I've discovered that uh, vertical, you know, is such, such a weird thing, right? Like, who knew? I don't know. Like, I, I didn't know, but who knew, like, vertical posts with bright yellow gets more attention? <laughs> But it does make, after you think about it, it makes logical sense because the vertical posts take up more real estate and then yellow is like seriously the most aggressive color to the eye. You know, it's bright, it grabs our attention. Um, now, obviously I only have so many vertical paintings, but if you look at like my top nine, my top nine posts, my top nine popular posts that are not um, uh, like, a, like this kind of controversial, Post uh, like I did a couple of posts of you know women uh, about women artists you know that got a ton of comments. Um, so, anyways, not not posts like that, but just like normal painting posts. Um, all of my top nine are like vertical. Mo the majority of them are vertical paintings 
with some sort of bright color or really strong value contrast. And it just makes sense because as people are scrolling and they see all these small images, you know, all these little squares and horizontals, that one is going to stand out more and catch their attention more. So sometimes simple things like that and just doubling down on that information. Uh, okay, so I've kind of covered a lot of this stuff so y'all can go through it on your own. Um, yeah, awesome. I know, right, Carol, exactly. So, and there are artists out there that will do that. Like if they are, if that is really the most important thing to them, seems like Instagram is important, an important tool for my business, but it's not the most important thing to me, you know, nor is like painting paintings that <coughs> people will always comment on or respond to, right? But there are artists out there that will do that where they will, um, yeah, be like, oh, vertical paintings, yellow, and then kind of turn it into a formula. I mean, that's fine. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a very, it's a very commercial artist that will, will do that. And that's their strong suit. Like they're kind of almost maybe like an illustrator or something where um, they may, like, I actually have a friend who's like this and um, he still is making money as an illustrator. And he, first time I met him, he was like, how do you come up? How do you know what to paint? I was like, what are you talking about? How do I know it's paint? Like, I just, you just paint something. You just paint something that you want to paint, you know? But he was an illustrator for many years. And so his mindset just worked better, like somebody giving him, you know, what they wanted. And then he would go create it. So he still does that now, even as a independent artist. Like he's always, every time, I haven't talked to him for a long time. We're kind of, I'm kind of not friends with a lot of the artists I used to be friends with. But anyways, um, but when we would talk, even as of a couple of years ago, he would always be chasing something. He would always be chasing like, oh, so-and-so, so, so-and-so -so popular artist told me to do X, Y, Z, you know? So he was always like looking outside of himself to create work. It was really fascinating to me. I um, mean, always like chasing like the next best thing and what he thought was going to take off and what he thought was trendy, like a get rich quick kind of scheme. And I would be like, oh my God, like I could not do that ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Or post in bikinis. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next, I just wanted to throw in here for you um, KPIs, you know, key performance in indicators.